Hello and welcome to lecture 24 of the course Computational Complexity. In the previous lecture, we saw Oracle Turing machines. In this lecture, we will see how uh, we can view the polynomial hierarchy. That By that I mean the classes in the polynomial hierarchy such as sigma 2, sigma 3, pi 2, pi 3, etc. You can, uh, you can get them, so we define them as uh, with this alternating quantifiers, right. So now there is another way to uh, arrive at these uh, classes in the polynomial hierarchy using the definition of Oracle Turing machines. So we'll see how to get that, right? So we can define these classes using uh, the Oracle Turing machines. What we will see in this uh, today's lecture is that sigma two is the same as the class N p with access to a sat oracle sigma 2 is equal to np with access to a sat oracle right so let's see how we'll see that we'll see the detailed proof and in general what is true is that sigma i is access is np with access to a q sat i oracle so you may recall that q sat i was the uh, complete problem in the complete problem of the uh, uh, sigma sigma i right so q set i is the q set k was the complete problem uh, of sigma k so q set 2 is like the, there, there are these alternating quantifiers similarly i'm just trying to see if i defined it uh, i think i just defined it to be similar to q set 2 but q set q set i is a uh, complete problem for the class uh, sigma i. So, sigma i plus 1 is n p with access to a q set i oracle. So, basically if you have it is n p with access to the complete problem of the, uh, the uh, of the of the of the higher of the class just one level below. So, here at sigma i plus 1 this the here at sigma i plus 1 for that we need n p with access to sigma i complete language. And similarly, pi i is co n p with access to a q set i complete problem, right? Q set i, which is sigma i complete problem. Okay, so this is uh, so these results, uh, the the proof of these results are exact exactly like the same way that uh, we will see the proof of sigma two is n p set. So because of which we will not really uh, be doing the other proofs. We'll just show the proof that sigma two is n p with access to a set or a Okay. So, like I said in the uh, lecture 23, uh, the previous lecture, whenever we want to show something like A language or class A is equal to class B, we end up showing uh, containment in both directions. So, we will show that left hand side is contained in the right hand side and vice versa. So, like that we will let us do first direction that uh, sigma 2 p is contained in NP with access to a sat oracle. Right? So, which is what we have here. So, and again, how do we show that some one set is contained inside the other? Again, the standard trick is to pick an arbitrary element of the, uh, the, the first set. So, in this case, sigma 2. So, let L be a language in sigma 2. And now, we will show that this L is uh, in NP with access to a set oracle. So, an arbitrary member here if you if can show it to be there, then it means that any member here is there and so this is a subset of that. So, we will take L to be in sigma 2. So, what does it mean when I say that L is in sigma 2? When I say L is in sigma 2, this means that L has a, uh, there is a polynomial, deterministic polynomial time verifier V such that whenever X is in L, whenever X is in L, uh, there are strings y or, or there exists a string y okay, such that for all z the verifier evaluates x y z to 1. Again there are other things about y and z being a polynomial length I am just skipped that detail. So, this is the uh, definition of sigma 2. L is in sigma 2 if there is a polynomial time verifier y, uh, v such that for all x in L it must be the case that there is a y such that for all z v x y z evaluates to 1 right? or the 
deterministic verifier successfully verifies x, y and z. Okay, so, now consider such an L. Now, how do we, now we need to show that such an L is also there in NP with access to a SAT oracle. So, what can that, so given, so the N, so basically we have to construct the NP machine, the non-deterministic Turing machine, non-deterministic polynomial attempt Turing machine with access to a SAT oracle, right. So, let us see how to do that. Okay, so the non-deterministic Turing machine, so basically given input x, it can guess the y, right, it can guess this y, which is a, uh, which is because NP has a capability to guess, but NP cannot uh, do this for all z thing, right, so NP cannot do that because NP can only guess something if it is there, right. So basically given input x, it can guess y and now give once x and y are this, uh, fixed then it needs to decide if this is true, what is true for all z is v x y z equal to 1 or does the verifier accept the triplet x y z. And slight notation change may help to change the perspective and view things differently. So once x and y are fixed, right? so x is the input and y is the guest, once y is guest, now v x y z is just a function of z, right? so I may one thing that we can do is to bring down uh, x and y as a subscript and then view it as a function of z alone. So once x and y are fixed, we can view v x y z as a function of z alone, which is what is happening happening here. Function of z alone. So now the NP machine needs to decide. Again, notice that till now we have not made use of the SAT oracle. NP machine needs to decide whether for all z v x y z is equal to 1, which is the same as we define v x y z to be this, right? v x y uh, with sub, uh, v x y as subscript of z, right? And so what is the negation of this? The negation is there exists z such that v x y z equal to 0, right? For all z v is equal to 1 and the negation is that there is some z for which it is 0, right? for all z something happens, for one z does, it does not happen, right? that is the negation. So, the negation is there exists z for which v x y z is 0. Now, instead of v x, I can change the verifier, right? I can, I can modify the verifier to give another polynomial time verifier which just flips the output. So, I will define a new verifier. Uh, called uh, v prime x y and v prime x y is just uh, flip the output of v x y. Right? So, you just what run, let v x y run and you flip the output. So, it is just a flip. So, v x y equal to 0 means v prime x y equal to 1 that is what we have in this uh, in, in this red circled input. So, we want the negation of this right. So, is the opposite of this true is what we want to know. But does there exist a z such that v prime x y is uh, v, v prime of z is equal to 1 is just a satisfiability query right. So, you have a verifier which can be viewed as a formula also, right. So, you can the entire verifier is an algorithm which like in cook levin theorem you can view it as a formula and you are asking whether there is a z that satisfies it, right. You are asking whether there is a z that satisfies it. If there is a z that satisfies it, so that is a satisfiability query. So, you can ask the satisfiability query and what we want is a negation of that. So, the negation is just you flip the output again. So, all that it boils down to is a negation query, right. So, that is what we need to do here. Uh, it is a negation query, it is a, it's a negation of a satisfiability query. So, just, 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 just once again, uh, we need to uh, have given a language in sigma 2, we need to view it as, we need, to, we need to see how it is NP with access to, how it is an NP with access to SAT oracle. So, Sigma 2 means it can be written in this form with the polynomial time verifier v, there x is y such that for all z v x y equals z equal to 1. So, then NTM n can uh, guess y 
and it needs to decide for all z v x y z equal to one. So instead of doing that, it, it we can we realize that it uh, we can view it as as a satisfiability query. Does there exist a z that's such that something happens? And that can be easily be done because we have access to a SAT oracle. So we just make the access, we just make the query to the SAT oracle and then uh, decide accordingly. Right. So that's why sigma 2 is contained in NP with access to SAT oracle. So that is just one direction of the proof, the other direction is pending. What is the other direction? That NP with access to SAT oracle is contained in sigma 2. So again the same thing, so we take an arbitrary language from the left hand side which is NP with access to a SAT oracle. So which means L is decided by a non-deterministic polynomial time machine N with an oracle access to satisfiability. Right? So this, is, this, is, this direction is slightly more involved than the other direction. So let me just go a bit slow. So what can N possibly do? N uh, is an deterministic Turing machine, so which means it has possibly multiple computation paths, uh, multiple accept rejects outcomes, and it is also it also has access to a SAT oracle, which means it will keep it will query the SAT oracle from time to time, right? It can query the SAT oracle from time to time, and uh, and, and 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 it, it can also use this in an adaptive manner, right? So it can make a query and then if it if the oracle if the if the response is yes then it does something if it does response is no all all this is part of the algorithm so it so these are the things that n is capable of doing so it's a non deterministic machine not np with access to a sat oracle right suppose so just to summarize or just to make say it very very formally suppose x is in l that means it's a non deterministic machine so that means there is one sequence of uh, choices that leads to x being accepted right? because it is not determinism. So let these choices be c1 to cm, it will be a fixed number of choices for a fixed input. right? So it let it make m choices by the non deterministic Turing machine n. Okay? And in, the, in this process, right? so this process will guide it using some computation paths, so it's an, it's, it has access to the SAT oracle. So it may be making many questions, queries to the SAT oracle. So let us say it makes k queries, where k is another fixed number, k queries to the SAT oracle. Let the responses to the k queries be a1 to ak. Okay? These are all yes no responses, equivalently we will view them as 0 1 responses. Okay? This is a yes instance, this is a no instance. right? Okay? So for each of the queries it receives uh, AI as a response, right? Right? Okay. So what it does is, um, so I'm just trying to uh, represent what it does in a in a pictorial fashion. Um, so it makes many choices C1 to Cm and queries it makes queries phi 1, phi 2 etc phi k. So I, I said it makes k queries So and recall it is each of them is a instance of satisfiability because that is the oracle that we have. So let the queries, so every time it, it must be writing a sat instance which is a, what is that instance? It is a boolean formula. Let the query, so the boolean formula instance let us let it be phi 1, phi 2, phi 3 up to phi k. Right? And the responses answers are a1, A2 up to AK, K queries, K answers. And if X is in L, there is a sequence of choices 
C1 to Cm such that which makes some k queries and which makes some uh, corresponding to the queries you get the correct answer. So, again the, one, the, the queries are fixed by the choices and the answers are decided by the queries right. So, it is a yes instance or no instance is the, the oracle does not lie. So, it just gives the correct answer right. So, this is what happens and uh, so again this is just what I written here phi, phi i denote the ith query right. So, if the answer is 1 which means it is satisfiable phi i is satisfiable which means that there is a satisfying assignment for phi 1 let it be let us call it u1 right. So, u1 is a satisfying assignment for phi 1 which means phi 1 or sorry phi i sorry I, I said u1 it is ui. So, phi i when given the assignment ui it is it evaluates a true or 1. If a i is 0 right if a i is 0 which means it is not satisfiable which means there is no satisfying assignment which means whatever assignment you try whatever assignment v i you try for all assignments v i phi i of v i will be 0 right. So, whatever you input it will be 0. Again what was the goal here? The goal here was to show that L is in sigma 2 right. We started by saying L is in NP with access to SAT oracle which means it makes not deterministic choices and gets yes no answers right and we are trying to interpret what these yes no answers are right. So, if, if it is yes answer there is a satisfying assignment to the query if it is a no answer there is no satisfying assignment to the query and that is what we that is where we are now. Now, all that we need to do now, so till now it seems like we were just understanding what it means uh, for this language L to accept a string x, right. It needs to have a sequence of choices and then queries and then yes and no and all that. Now, all that we need to do is to write these things in a formal logical sense and that will start looking like a. Uh, uh, that will start looking like a sigma 2 language already. So, let us see. So, uh, all I am doing is to just write it very formally in a logical step sense. So, if x is in L right or x is in L if and only if there exists choices c1 to cm right some some m some fixed number responses a1 to ak right. So, the choices guide the uh, guide the the machine to make queries and obviously there will be answers right which which lead to acceptance. So, but then we will encode we are also encoding acceptance here and and u1 to uk can be there are u1 to uk satisfying assignments for uh, the in the cases where uh, so where so, you, this, this is this is important when a i equal to 1 right. So, u i is so phi i u i equal to 1 when a i equal to 1 right and such that so all so and, and there exists a u i right. So, so that is why it is all of these three things are coming under the existential quantifier. So, I will put a bracket and this thing for all we, we should be for all because if a i is 0 then whatever input you try should be uh, should not work. So, this we should be for all quantifier. So, there is, so we have a there exists quantifier and we have a for all quantifier right and such that n accepts x using choices c 1 to c m and answers a 1 to a k and right. So, this is the choices of uh, this is acceptance of n and finally, we also want to verify the correctness of the queries ok. So, this is just about n. We also want to verify what the oracle did right. So, that also we should be doing. What 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 is it that we should verify? So, whatever I had written here if a i equal to 1 then it should we should verify that phi i u i is equal to 1 right. So, it is a it is an implication that I have written here. But as we have seen in previous lecture an implication can easily be converted to a Boolean formula and if a i is 0 then phi i v i should be 0. 
anyway the for the vi there is an external universal quantifier so that will make sure that all the this applies for all the vis and this we have to take an and over all the choices of i so in the in the, in the two parts either the left side or the right side may make it active depending on what ai is so there is an existential quantifier followed by a universal quantifier and followed by this formula at the bottom uh, and we have this part also this light blue part but this light blue part is also it, it's just an uh, non determinist uh, it, it's just n accepts x using the choices m so all this is something that is verifiable uh, in polynomial time right so given m choices it's just a matter of verifying whether this non deterministic choices lead to acceptance and what i have written in the bottom this part also it is easy to uh, verify by a deterministic polynomial time machine so the entire thing is a um, deterministic verifier with preceded by an existential and a universal quantifier so that is the proof that an arbitrary language in np with np with uh, uh, with access to a sat oracle is contained in sigma 2p so basically we write down what it means for a language to be contained in np with access to a sat oracle once we write that down basically it's a bunch of non deterministic choices with a bunch of queries and responses once we write that down we can encode it in a in a way with existential universal quantifier followed by a deterministic polynomial time verifier and and that's about it that shows that uh, np with access to sat oracle is contained in sigma 2p and we have already seen the other direction so this shows that sigma 2 is equal to np with access to sat oracle and the other things that i said earlier sigma i, I plus 1 is contained is equal to np with access to qsat i oracle and likewise for pi i plus 1 the proof follows very very similarly so i will not get into that and one thing that you you may wish to note here is that uh no i, I think that's so i was just trying to see if the quantifiers could be alternated but it is not possible here because um uh, the choices have to be made before v1 to vk so you cannot alternate the quantifiers and uh, with that i have uh, we have completed the the description of how we can get the languages in polynomial hierarchy using the oracle turing machine description now let me just summarize what we have seen in this week week 4 right um we saw four or five different uh, items the first thing that we saw was p space completeness so we saw what is p space uh, what is p space completeness we saw the language tqbf and one point i felt i did not stress enough during the p space lecture was that all of polynomial hierarchy is contained in p space because the qsat k which is a, the 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 complete language for sigma k is uh, can be viewed as an instance of tqbf hence um, all of um, the complete languages of all the class all the uh, classes in the polynomial hierarchy can all be reduced to the Uh, complete language uh, or com can all be reduced to tqbf which is p space complete right so uh, that is uh, one point p space completeness and the fact that all of polynomial hierarchy is contained in p space we saw many instances of how games or the generalized instances of specific games such as chess are uh, are largely mostly p space complete because basically the game just boils down to analyzing a position drawing the game tree and at the end deciding a winner or loser is basically just a uh, you can you can encode it in a boolean formula so it just becomes like a fully quantified boolean formula and hence it becomes a tqbf instance that is the reason why the generalized versions of games are p space complete 
Again, the finite versions of games are all finite and then there is either a uh, yes or a no or whatever answer, right? Like, like tic-tac-toe. After this, we saw Ladner's theorem, which stated the existence of NP intermediate languages if P is not equal to NP. Right? So, NP intermediate are the language are is a space between NP complete and polynomial time. So, it says that such a space exists if P and NP are different. It cannot be that P is there, NP complete is there, and th there is a void in between. This paid, this, the, the space in between is filled with languages. And finally, we saw Oracle Turing machines. We saw the definition. Um, we saw the definition and we saw some, uh, we saw the Turing reduction and uh, we saw how polynomial hierarchy, the like classes and polynomial hierarchy can be, uh, uh, can be uh, or, or, or characterized as the, as a result of the Oracle Turing machines. And yeah, and, and one more point is that, okay, one point that I missed, maybe I'll just add in the middle, sorry, one point that I missed in the summary. Sorry, uh, one point that I missed in the summary which I will include now is, is space hierarchy theorem. Basically, if f1 is or if f is or g is little o of f, then uh, then then d space of g is strictly contained in d space of f, meaning there is something that you can compute with f space that you cannot compute with g space. This is space hierarchy theorem. Okay, this was proved also uh, using diagonalization, much like time hierarchy theorem. So these were the main concepts, and with space hierarchy theorem. And uh, with space hierarchy theorem and p-space completeness, space complexity, uh, space bounded complexity part is complete. Now we are venturing into other aspects such as Ladner's theorem and Oracle Turing machines. Um, so uh, till space hierarchy, uh, till space hierarchy theorem, till or still space complexity, I, I was referring to Sipser. Now. Um, uh, I don't think Sipser contains many of us. I think it may contain some of these topics, but uh, I think it is better to refer to uh, Arora Barak or uh, Papadi Mitru's book for the for the remaining topics. Or uh, you can also Google it. There are many other lecture notes, excellent lecture notes where people uh, have have exposed exposited on this. Of course, you can, I will also share whatever I have I have been preparing. But in addition to that, you can also search for other material. And if you want other specific, uh, if there are specific requests for other specific material, please feel free to uh, write to me in the forum. I, I can, I will be happy to share. Okay. And with that, I will conclude this lecture and conclude week 4 as well. Uh, thank you and see you next week.